Hi everyone, welcome to a new episode of Crypto Tips. My name is Heidi. And my name is Toby. And today we are on episode 44 of our Patreon member questions. So if you want to join us on Patreon, you can submit questions, you get our trade alerts, you get to see our portfolio, everything. Um, so yeah, <laughs> let's get into it. A link for that is down below in the video description if you want to check it out. First question, why is buying Bitcoin still a good idea when Ethereum, DOT, ICP, and Crow, etc., have way more opportunity to 5 or 10x in a shorter time frame? Do they? Do they really have <laughs> way more opportunity to 5 and 10x in is a it shorter guaranteed? time frame? Really? I mean, look at what happened in, from March 2020 till you know three months ago it went from mm. 30 something hundred dollars to sixty five thousand dollars really and, and with zero like risk there wasn't any risk guys like bitcoin is the literally the the most stable network in the history of the world it's never been hacked so you know you're going to place your money that is it's kind of sketchy to, to get into most of those other than like ETH, which is yeah. still pretty, you know, you don't They're know where that's They're going through a headed. huge change from proof of work to ex proof of stake. Any kind of a bug can, can happen with that too. Exactly. And look at the amount of crow coins out there. Like, yeah. I'm, and, and the... And yeah. ICP had ICP. a crazy rug pull situation happen not too long ago. Yeah. And, and <laughs> DOT, that's, that hasn't even been around for very long. Like, yeah. guys, you, you need tested proven and tested yeah. things like Bitcoin, where literally there's only like a 16 million to 14 to 16 million total supply because most of these coins are lost and the, some of the people that, that have owned these, these private keys are dead, mm -hmm. you know, and those are actually the most profitable wallets in the world right now is the ones where people have never touched it. So that said, what's the point? What, what do you need? Like, I mean, if you're making 20X and a couple like in no time at all and you know where this space is headed you know where the billionaires are placing their money you know where you know uh, corporations uh, and nations are actually uh, putting their money t into a reserve currency that it's reserve money which is bitcoin mm -hmm. so like i mean and we're not I don't know. That sounded like we're huge Bitcoin maximalists. <laughs> I kind of I mean we kind like, of I, are but not totally because what we are always saying and what we put into practice ourselves is we have what we're always saying in these, if you're new, you're going to get used to hearing this a lot, um, is we, our strategy that's been really successful is to first get a solid position in solid cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum. And then once you're comfortable with that kind of security, that kind of safety net, you can venture out into these other altcoins and still make the five or 10 X that you think they're going to do. But why do you want to take the risk of going all in on such a risky coin? I mean, yeah, during a bull market, it's far more likely that these coins are going to appreciate it just because of how much money is pouring into cryptocurrency when the FOMO kicks in, when the hype train starts again and everyone and their mother wants to get into crypto and they're having this exact uh, thought as you is that, oh, I can't make money on Bitcoin anymore, even though, Bitcoin, uh, even though Toby just pointed out less than a year ago, 20x. The chances of you as a newcomer, if you are a newcomer to cryptocurrency, of you timing the market for an altcoin is so unlikely and you're going to lose money most likely um, unless you have a solid investment plan and you can stick to it. It's never a bad idea to have some exposure to Bitcoin first just so you don't yeah. completely lose everything and you're at least holding a solid cryptocurrency. Yes, exactly. So well, I mean, that's why Bitcoin is our number one position yeah. and it's going to probably stay number one. I mean, unless Ether does crazy, because that's our number two yeah. position. Um, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't be invested in other coins. I'm, I'm saying is like, if you want long-term security, kind of guarantee, mm. if Bitcoin as is best the closest, of a guarantee as you can get in crypto. Yeah. thing to guarantee is you're gonna ever get. Like it's, it's a golden opportunity. And yeah, like Ether could explode in price, that's great. We'll be really happy, and so were our Patreon <laughs> members as well. But you know, like I, as far as Bitcoin goes, like that—that that is, you're not gonna want. I don't want to get rid of my Bitcoin, and even like during the top of the bull run, I'm 
Probably we might be gonna, slightly tempted to take some profits, but maybe, but like not like panic sell, not panic selling, but you know, not eager to get totally out of that position compared to other altcoins. That yeah, I mean, it depends. If Bitcoin like suddenly skyrockets to five hundred thousand dollars, and I'll yeah, be like, I'll right, I'm like <laughs> <laughs> maybe go buy some property, you know? Probably but like, take some out, yeah. but like, I'm not gonna want to keep it into like, I'm not gonna be trading it for like an alt, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, no way. Like, think about how well people had done back in 2017 and 2018 by holding Bitcoin instead of, you know, holding their alts. Yeah. You know, they did really well because, I mean, Bitcoin went from pretty much 20x. Yeah. Again, it seems to be a similar pattern here. So, you know, the last bull run, you know, it reached $20,000 pretty much. Now, what's, what's the potential here of if Bitcoin ends up, you know, 20xing from here, you know, that's freaking million dollars, $400,000 uh, <laughs> if you take from the, the recent all time high, which is about $20,000. 20, yeah. So, you know, there's plenty of potential here, plenty of like ways to be very wealthy in this space. And, you know, we I've been doing this for eight years, Heidi's seven years, something right like that. Him. Yeah. And, and, you know, we've done really well because we we stuck with that plan. We yeah. didn't kind of veer off to, to the side and go, okay, you know, we didn't get thinking, too distracted. No, which yeah. is good because we learned early. I, I learned early. I guess the, the more I understand Bitcoin, the more I am like so comfortable with putting pretty much everything in it. I'm not everything, but yeah. you know, like what's the phrase irresponsibly long on totally Bitcoin? Totally. I'm totally responsibly long in Bitcoin because <laughs> yeah. anything else is like, what are you going to put it in? Yeah. US dollars. I mean, uh, the next video, I think we're going to get into that where I'm going to show you about stable coins and how dangerous yeah. stable coins can actually be. Anyways, we covered it. Okay, yeah. next question. What would happen to coins or tokens that had been swapped to the Binance Smart Chain if Binance closed up shop? Is the value locked in the Binance Exchange bridge or is it on a smart contract that a third party bridge could help access? Um, so what's really important to understand here is the difference between the Binance smart chain, the blockchain, and Binance as a company, like its centralized exchange and all the things that they run with that. Um, because Binance, the centralized exchange we've seen over the past few months is like just getting slapped back and forth through all these, with all these regulations with governments around the world. Um, and if you, if you look at how that company is actually tied to the Binance smart chain, the blockchain itself, Pretty much all of the nodes that are running the Binance Smart Chain are in one degree or another connected to Binance Company. Um, so that is not a good look for anything that's trying to be decentralized or robust or, you know, wants to continue to uh, exist despite any government trying to smother it with regulations or just trying to take it out altogether. Um, so yeah, there's, I think there's definitely a risk that the Binance Smart Chain could be taken out if the Binance company is shut down, how they enforce that. But this question now of, you know, if a third party could help access the coins that would then be locked in that blockchain, um, if they're, let's say it's a wrapped coin or, or if, if it's involved with a smart contract, most smart contracts involved with DeFi or yeah, most smart contracts just at all are controlled by the developers who built them. And hopefully they've organized it in a way so that they don't have central control over that smart contract. It's also known as God mode or an admin key uh, where one person can pretty much do whatever the heck they want to with that smart contract and with the coins that are locked in that smart contract. Best case scenario is you have a multi-sig uh, signature situation happening with a smart contract where multiple people have to come together and agree to make changes to that smart contract to release funds. Um, most DeFi smart contracts have actually a pretty small amount. Most of them, a lot of them have an admin key, which is not a good look. And then the, the next best thing is most of them have like two out of three have to come together to sign or three out of five have to come together and sign. That means basically two people can agree to make a changes to a smart contract and steal all the money, make crazy changes to the smart contract that affects everyone who's intera interacting with it. Um, but anyway, unless the people who have the, uh, the signing keys for the smart contract involved with the Binance Smart Chain and the tokens with it, 
unless they give those out to that third party or to anyone else, if they get taken out or if it gets destroyed somehow, some third party can't just randomly come in and make changes to the smart contract unless they have the keys that allow them to make the changes, to sign the transactions needed for the tra changes to become reality. So that's going to wrap it up for today's episode. Thank you everyone for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, if you appreciate it, we like it. If you hit a like, hit the like button and hit subscribe to get more videos like this. They're coming out every day. And what else? What else is Stay going on? Stay disobedient. Bye guys. <laughs> Bye.